Welcome to scheduling for the 10th grade year. If you are at FCA, you are watching this video and then in a week or so, Mrs. Stevens and I will come into class and we will bring the paperwork so that you can complete your scheduling. If you are watching this online or you are a freshman that is scheduling in the summer new to our school, we will have sent this video to you along with the paperwork in an email. At this time, we just ask that you watch and write down any questions that you may have. I really like this saying, the expert in anything was once a beginner. It's very true. As you have navigated your first year in high school as a freshman, you are becoming more confident in what things you need to do. You will find that this information, if you were here at FCA last year, we shared a lot of this information with you. And that's a good thing because it is good to remind you of those things that you need to know as you get ready to schedule as a 10th grader. And then we are also going to talk about things that you'll need to do throughout the rest of your high school years so that you are the best prepared that you can be when you graduate from FCA. I'm going to start with prayer. Just a reminder, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says it so well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And so, Lord, we just pray right now for this session with um, these freshmen as they get ready to become sophomores. I thank you, Father, for your hand on their life, and I continue to ask that you would guide and direct them. Lord, I thank you that you do have a plan and a purpose for every student. Um, and as they um, plan out their remaining years of high school, I just ask that you would guide and direct them in your perfect plan for their life. And we just uh, commit this time to you in the very precious name of Jesus. Amen. Part of what we do at as the FCA guidance office is to make sure that you have resources for planning. And if you go to the FCA website and you in the search box put in courses and scheduling, you will find a lot of information, including the forms, the resources that we use, the course description handbook. There's even an FCA high school course pacing sheet. So if you would like to get started and check these things out before Mrs. Stevens and I come into class, or if you have additional questions about some of the courses that I'm talking about and what those courses look like, then this is the page to go to where you will find the course description handbook and other things that can help you with your scheduling process. Another resource for you on the FCA website concerns College Credit Plus. You can get to this page by searching CCP. This includes information about taking college courses while you are still in high school the process, the checklist, the permission to participate. All of that information is found on this page. Now, Mrs. Stevens will be doing a video similar to this one that she will send out for those students who are interested in being part of CCP for next year. Resources for planning having to do with college and career. There are some really good ones on our website. Again, go to the FCA website, just search career and college or search college and you'll be able to find it. This talks about Naviance where we have uh, information where you can search for college and, and information having to do with that. There is also a section where you can go in and do some uh, career college advising resources. So that's a great site. Check it out and start off scheduling. We want to talk about the requirements for all students. Those students who attend Fairfield Christian Academy must complete 24 course credits in order to graduate. The 24 course credits that you need, the minimum requirements include Bible, 
or credits. You need one Bible per year that you are in attendance at FCA. So if you are a transfer student coming in your sophomore year, you would need three years of Bible. Going on, you need four credits of English, four of mathematics, three of science, three credits of social studies, a half a credit of health, a half a credit of phys ed, one credit of fine arts, one computer credit, a half a credit for senior project, and then that leaves two and a half credits of electives. We do recommend foreign language if you are a college prep student. Foreign language is not required to graduate, however, it is highly recommended if you are going to college. The Academic Honors Diploma is an honors diploma that is above the regular high school diploma. And students who want to earn this honors diploma need to fulfill seven of the following eight criteria. Four Englishes, four maths, four science credits, which include chemistry and another advanced science, four credits of social studies, foreign language, three credits in one language or two credits in two different languages, one credit of fine arts, a grade point average of 3.5 and a 4.0 scale, and an ACT or SAT score, the ACT composite score of 27, the SAT composite of 1280. Now, since most students don't know what their ACT, SAT scores are until later in high school, some students don't take that until their junior year, you can start taking it next year as a sophomore. We recommend that if you want an honors diploma, that you at least work on the first seven criteria there and then if you do get the 27 then you can decide whether or not you take one of the other areas and drop back on them honors diploma options also include honors diplomas that are more specific to math and science the fine arts as well as social studies and civic engagement those honors diplomas emphasize other areas including math and sciences the arts and social studies if you are interested in learning more about that then you would go to the fca website and go ahead and type in graduation requirements and you'll see information about those honors diplomas as well your graduation class, in addition to needing 24 credits to graduate, also has two additional requirements. They're called the permanent requirements. The first one is to demonstrate competency, and the second is preparation for college and career. You demonstrate competency by passing the Algebra One end of course exam, and the ELA 2, which is English 10, end of course exam with a competent score. The competent score we will share with you after you take the exam. Those of you who have taken Algebra 1 already have earned a competent score. We do place that on your transcript. So as we progress through your watching of what you need to graduate, you will know if you need to retake the algebra test or the English 10 uh, course. We do make sure that we let you know these things. The other requirement is the preparation for college and career requires earning two Ohio diploma seals. The diploma seals that you are required to earn at least two, you can earn more. This is a list of all of those seals that you can choose from. Again, you can find more information about these individual seals on the FCA website. If you search graduation requirements. Some of these are geared more towards students who are at career centers 
like the Ohio Means Job the Readiness Seal. And we do have some students who will go to the Career Center and graduate from FCA, having also attended the Career Center. The Honors Diploma Seal is one that you get if you're working on the Honors Diploma. The Technology Seal, the Industry Recognized Credential Seal, those tend to be more career-oriented. The Citizenship Seal is one that you can earn by doing well, earning at least a three or better on the U.S. History end of course and the Government end of course. The College Ready Seal is doing well on the ACT tests and getting a an 18 on the English, a 22 on the math, and a 22 on the reading. The science seal, again, requires taking an end of course test, the biology test, and getting a three or better. You can also earn a seal by enlisting in the military as a senior. There are also three locally defined, that means that they are FCA created seals, one for student engagement, which is involvement in sports and activities. The other is fine arts and performing arts, which is being part of choir and band. And the last one is community service seal, which is actually using your community service, your Cecil Bible coursework to get that seal. Of the two seals, you can only have one that is locally defined if you get only two. If you get more than two, you can have as many as you want, although I doubt anybody would have all of them, <laughs> but you could if you really wanted to. More information about those diploma seals and then other graduation requirements is on the FCA website. You would go to that website and then you would search, gra search graduation and you can see information about that. To help a student earn the college ready diploma seal. The state of Ohio has arranged so that during your junior year you can take a college readiness test for free at school at FCA. It can either be the ACT or the SAT. The school is we choose which test and since most of our students go to colleges that want to see the ACT we do offer the ACT test. And that ACT test is given at FCA during your junior year. It is free and it can be used for uh, the scores that you need for college admission. I want to remind you about the FCA grading scale. Most of our classes are on what we call the FCA standard scale. We also have an FCA honors scale. And those, that honor scale is used for our honors classes as well as our CCP classes. The difference in the honor scale is that it allows students to take more difficult classes. Because they are taking more difficult classes, if they get an A minus, that is still considered a 4.0. So it's just a little different scale to encourage students not to be afraid to take harder classes as they progress in their scheduling. So um, the FCA grading scale, your high school grade on your transcript is the semester grade for each of your classes. So you want to make sure that every semester you are keeping an eye on your GPA. Um, one of the things I want to remind your high school GPA is very important, and it has become even more important in the college decision process. Colleges have begun to offer students what is called test optional acceptance. What that means is that as a senior, you, you can have a college look at just your GPA and not necessarily your GPA and your ACT scores. This can be a good thing for students who are able to manage their GPA and may not be very good test takers. Now, if you're a great test taker, then you want the college to look at your GPA and your test scores. But in the case of those that it may be better for the college to look at the GPA, 
then it is important to make sure that your GPA is, is as strong as it can be. We have had a grade forgiveness program at FCA for many years. This is a program where students can retake a course that they may have passed with a lower grade in order to improve on their GPA. We have expanded that grade forgiveness program to not only include retaking classes in the classroom, but also using the Ignitia online platform that we have. That program is an NCAA approved program. So for students who want to be division one or two athletes, the Ignitia program is accepted. And we are very confident that a student who takes a course or retakes a course with the Ignitia program is still taking a very much college preparatory course. The difference between taking the forgiveness program in the classroom, which is you choose if, you're, if you need to retake a semester course, maybe you got a B in the semester, you can retake that class that semester in the classroom, or you can take the Ignitia course equivalent. And that Ignitia, Ignitia course equivalent allows you to do a pretest and then builds that course based on what you don't know. The best example I can give you is say as a junior high student, you took algebra one and you got a B grade. And now you are in high school getting A's and you look at that B and realize that that has pulled your GPA down. You can take an Ignitia algebra, class, algebra one class. We would give you the pretest and then based on what you don't know, you would then finish out that course. So it is really kind of a good way for us to make sure that you know the information, which is very, very important, and that you can also then improve on your GPA. We take the old grade off and then put the new grade on your transcript. So it might be wise to take a look at what courses you've taken and if you want to um, try the grade forgiveness program to talk to us about doing that or schedule that into your schedule for next year. Your GPA is important for graduation. FCA does not rank. Ranking students limits your ability to get scholarships because our class sizes are not large. And so that is the reason that we don't rank. However, we do incorporate the cum laude system. And so we recognize our higher honor students as um, cum laude students. So if you have a 4.0 throughout high school, that's all four years of high school, then you will graduate with a summa cum laude medal. If you have a 3.9 to a 3.99 GPA, you will earn a magna cum laude medal. And then if you graduate with a 3.7 to a 3.89, you will receive a cum laude medal. GPA is also used to help determine our graduation speakers. We look at our summa cum laude students and we generally will take those with the highest GPA and ACT composite scores. However, with the changes that are going on with the test optional, we may not include the ACT. Uh, that is a, a part of the process that's in transit, but just know that we do look at uh, our higher graduating speakers coming from our GPA students. Another way that you can be honored at graduation is by wearing honor cords. And those honor cords are related to the principal's honor roll the high honor roll, the honor roll, and then also members of our honor society wear honor cords at graduation. Your GPA for college acceptance obviously is part of the college application process. We've already talked about that test optional choice that you get that emphasizes GPA. The other thing is to realize that the timing of your GPA 
is very important. When you apply to college, that is going to happen in October and November of your senior year. That means that your GPA at the end of your junior year is very, very important. You can't wait until your senior year to pull up your GPA. So when you are planning for your scheduling, one of the things I would ask you to make sure that you are looking at your GPA versus taking credits quickly. It is wiser to take fewer courses to make sure that your GPA is strong than to hurry up and take a lot of credits to get them done quickly and then also be jeopardizing your GPA. And other things to remember as you think about getting ready for college is think about making sure that your course load is demanding and yet manageable for you. You want to keep an eye on both your ACT scores and your GPA, and I've already talked a lot about that. You want a balanced course load. It is wise to make sure that you are taking something that you enjoy as well as the academics and also have a study hall if you need that. We also recommend that you work on being a well-rounded student and not just academic only. Colleges do want to see that in their potential applicants for their universities. Let's talk about study hall. Study hall is not only a great place to manage your homework, especially if you're an athlete or you're involved in after school activities. It's also a great place for you to work on Naviance, looking at college and career opportunities. It's a great place to touch base with teachers that maybe you are behind in. It's also a great time that you can get permission to come and talk to uh, us in the guidance office. So study hall built into your schedule is not only just a time to study, it's also a, a time that maybe you can do a, a, an Ignitia forgiveness course. But I would strongly encourage you to talk to your parents and talk about what you need in order to be successful. And that does include having study halls. Students can have more than one study hall on their schedule, especially they might want it during a a sports season. I know I'm going to say this about avoiding senior slack off and I'm saying and I know you're going to say I'm just a freshman. I'm going to be a sophomore next year. But please, please remember. Don't try and load up your first three years so that you can relax or goof off as a senior. That's not a good idea. It's not good for your GPA and it certainly does not look good on your transcript. Colleges do look at your transcript your senior year. They don't want to see you taking only a few courses. They want to see you finishing strong, and it is wise to finish well. The other thing is college applications and scholarships are another thing that you can be working on now and looking ahead toward. Next year, as a sophomore, you will have the opportunity to take the PSAT. That is a practice test as a sophomore for the test that is taken as a junior that will allow you to be part of the National Merit Scholarship Program. We have had many students who are semifinalists and finalists in the National Merit, which has afforded them tuition to colleges and it's an outstanding program. You also are able to start taking the ACT. You can start taking it now. It is offered, uh, I believe it is even offered more than seven times a year now. They keep increasing it. Just starting this past fall in September, the ACT has begun allowing students to take the ACT once you've taken it the first time. You can go back and say you didn't do so well on a math section. Instead of doing the entire ACT again, you can go in and just take that math section and then they will super score. Super scoring again is taking the best scores over multiple tests and averaging them out. And that is a good thing as well. 
Um, remind, reminder about family connection. Naviance is where we have that college and career planning. Um, there's great searches. There's a great interest inventory. And then again, there's ACT practice. That's stuff that you can begin to do now. You can do that in the summer. You can do that in study hall. The more you practice taking the ACT, the better you will get at the actual test. College Credit Plus is an opportunity that you can take starting next year if you are ready. This does require an ACT or an SAT or even the Accuplation score that shows that you are college ready. Um, we do the Accuplacer here at FCA, so if that is something you will need to do, we have that here. You also get to enroll in college while you're in high school, and it does allow you to earn credits for both high school and college. This graph shows you um, the statistics for FCA. As you can see, we usually have students begin to expand into taking CCB courses starting their 10th grade year. U.S. History is a great starting course. And then you can see that that increases junior year and then into senior year. The one thing I, point, I want to point out is that not all students take CCP coursework. Many of them do, but not all of them do. This is a listing of the College Credit Plus courses that we offer at FCA. The OCU, Ohio Christian University professors, will come to FCA to teach the courses. We do have some of our teachers at FCA who are um, instructors for OCU. Most of the time we try and have these classes in the classroom with an actual professor. Sometimes we have to have them online or in a hybrid situation, especially if the number of students that are interested in the course is smaller. You can see that the 10th grade year, we do recommend taking survey of history because that does take pl the place of US history. Okay, so let's talk about scheduling. Next year, as a uh, 10th grader, you're gonna be taking Bible 10. Your Bible class includes CECL. And what is CECL? Basically, it stands for Students Engaged in Servant Leaders Leadership, CECL. That is your FCA service organization. You are part of an organization that you can put on your senior resume saying that this is an organization that I'm part of through my school. It not only is good for your senior resume because that's where you'll document your community service, your service to school, your service to uh, community, but it's also where you can then build your community service diploma, Ohio SEAL. English 10 is the course that you will take next year. It is also the course that you will need to take the end of course exam in the spring, and that is the course that you need to show competency for as part of your graduation requirement. Math would be the next subject. Just to remind you, the minimum college prep for math is Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. We really do recommend that you take math every year so that you can stay math ready and not become math rusty. Although some students who may be going to the Career Center as juniors and seniors may have a different type of math that they need to take, we do encourage you to talk with your math instructor that you have this year as far as what should be your next step in taking math. There is a Math Pathways letter on the scheduling website on the FCA that can help you see the three different tracks that we have for math. We have a regular math track, a little faster one, and then a very fast one for those students who are headed for a math college major. Sciences. Um, you will take biology this year if you haven't taken it, uh, it as a, a freshman. Sometimes we have, do have freshmen that come in with uh, biology, but as a 10th grader, you'll also take the end of course exam 
And if you get a three or better on that end of course exam, then you will automatically receive the Ohio Diploma Science Seal. Um, college recommendation uh, minimums are physical science, biology, and chemistry. And then we do strongly recommend that students take physics. That helps your ACT score. And then anatomy and phys, especially if you're thinking of going into a medical field. For your social studies, you need three for the regular high school diploma. And if you're working on an honors diploma, you need four. Next year as a 10th grader, you will take US history. That US history does have an end of course exam. Now that end of course exam, along with the government course that you will take as a junior, those two end of course exams, if you get a three or better on both of them, then you will receive the Ohio Citizenship Diploma Seal. There are two ways to take US history. One is to do the college preparatory full year course. The other way is to take the CCP Survey of History II course. That is a semester course. You still receive a full credit. It is a college ready course, so students need to be prepared to do college level work. The other part of taking the CCP coursework is that you do not need to take the end of course exam. Your course grade becomes the score for your end of course exam. So if you get an A or a, B, a or an a B, you get a five on the end of course exam. If you get a, a C, you uh, receive a four. If you have a D, then you receive a three. So it is a good class for students who are ready to take college credit plus coursework. Um, I, in addition, college prep for social studies, uh, world history, US history, US government, and of course, econ and financial literacy are required. Uh, social studies units must include at least a half a credit American history. You guys will have a full credit. Um, but minimally a half a credit of American government that usually is taken during your junior year and then a half a credit of world history. Most of you probably have already a full credit because you took it this year as freshmen. Uh, foreign language. Remember, it's not required to graduate. However, most colleges do recommend at least two years in one foreign language with three or four encouraged. And if you're working on an honors diploma, you know that you need three years of one language or two years of two. Foreign languages that we have at FCA, we have Spanish one through five, and that is in the classroom. We really recommend the classroom as the best way to prepare for college taking a foreign language. We do have Spanish on the Ignitia Lab for those students who want to maybe take it a little slower or at their own pace. We only have levels one, two, and three in the Ignitia Lab, but a student could transfer into the classroom after taking those three years. And then we also have French one and French two as part of the Ignitia Lab. The graduation for fine arts is one credit, and there is an offering sheet on the FCA scheduling site. We will also bring that information in when we schedule with you. Many of these courses that are fine arts, which include music, choir, night singers, visual media, painting, art, those classes can be taken for repeat credit, which means that you can take choir every year of high school. That's a great class, especially if you are musically or artistically inclined. It's also a great GPA builder. You need a computer credit to graduate. We recommend that you take computer one in the classroom. Many of you have taken that as freshmen. If you haven't, you may want to sign up for that as a sophomore. We do have a computer competency assessment. That is for students who can type very, very well who also know their way around a computer very, very well. We do ask uh, parents to help us assess a student's computer competency before taking the credit that way, because we really do want to make sure that they have the skills that are going to help them finish high school 
and do well either in the career or the colleges that they go to. There are also some Ignitia online lab courses that are in computer science or software development that students can also take. Phys Ed, um, physical education, it, you need a half a credit. Some of you may have had it for your seventh and eighth grade. Strength training is a great course to take, especially if you're an athlete. Just remember, you can also take strength training two days a week, three days a week, five days a week. We do, we can tailor that. You can also do the physical education waiver. The physical education waiver is set up where you can have that half a credit of phys ed requirement waived by your participation in two seasons of any FCA sport, cheerleading, archery, and or marching band. So once you have participated in two seasons of any of those, then you can apply for that PE waiver. You fill out a form and then you also um, turn that into the guidance office. It's placed on your student transcript. There is no credit or grade, but and then you do have to do an additional half credit amount in another subject area. Another option for your phys ed requirement is to take the Ignitia phys ed or the physical fitness course. That can be adjusted based on the credit amount that you're needed. It can either be a full half credit or say you were in junior high and you still need a quarter of a credit. We can adjust that course based on what you need. The Ignitia Phys Ed class can be taken during the school year or it can be taken during the summer. The Ignitia Summer Course is done by Mrs. Stevens, who is the facilitator. And the course, again, it is $160 for the half credit. If you don't need to take that much credit, we do adjust both the amount of work that you have to do as well as the cost of the course. As you can see, you would register for the class in May and pay for the class, and then the course starts uh, May 29th and goes into the summer. Your health credit is required. We do the Ignitia online during the school year and then there is a summer opportunity that you can do as well. The summer Ignitia health course is $160. Mrs. Brake is the facilitator and just like the phys ed class you would uh, register in May and the course would start as soon as school is out. Both of these courses, you do your coursework at home and then you do come in to take tests at FCA. You will have a, a schedule on when you can come in, but you only take the five tests that are required at the school. Again, the Ignitia Labs uh, provide us 65 courses offered during the school year, can be scheduled into a teacher supervised lab period. It's also available 24 seven, so you can do it. Just gives more options for students to. Senior project is a class that you take your senior year. It's your capstone project. It is where you get to take all the things that you've learned over high school, and then you get to develop a project you do a paper connected with it and a presentation. On the FCA website, there is a whole section about senior project that not only includes how the projects are done, but also examples of projects that students have done in the past. So I really encourage you to take a look at that. Some students actually start their senior projects early. The other thing is part of senior project is your senior resume. And remember that that starts your freshman year. We really do encourage you, if at all possible, to start putting in your resume information into Naviance. Some suggestions that I can make as far as things to think about to build your resume for your senior year is being part of an athletic team or archery, being on student council, being a class officer, being a member of quiz team, also being inducted into honor societies, NHS or 
the Math Honor Society or the Art Honor Society or Music Honor Society or the National English Society. Peer tutoring is another resume builder if you're a math tutor, also participating in marching band and choir, mentor opportunities where you assist a teacher or you're a PE assistant or you help in the school offices or the library. Those are all great opportunities that show that you're a responsible student. Other ways that uh, you can build your resume is including your CECL and your mission outwork, outreach work, as well as babysitting or house sitting or even pet sitting. People are not going to leave their child or their house with you unless you're responsible. So those are good things to put on your resume. So now we come to the end of this workshop and the question is, what do I do now? The next step is to complete the pre-scheduling form. We, you don't have that form yet. If you are watching this at FCA, we will bring that in when Mrs. Stevens and I come in and we do the actual workshop. If you are watching this online, we would have emailed that pre-scheduling form to you. We'll help you fill out that pre-scheduling form and then you can take that home. You want to have your parents look at it and they need to sign it then that needs to be turned into the guidance office. We then take that information and we build the master schedule. And once the master schedule is built, then we do take your pre-scheduling form and we build your schedule. You do have up until two weeks after the start of school to make changes to your schedule. We really do recommend that you try and make sure that your schedule is the way you want it before school starts. Even though you can change your schedule up to two weeks, it's kind of hard to catch up with a class if you wait until that two weeks. So the other thing is we ask you to review and adjust your four-year plan schedule. Keep an eye on that and um, on behalf of Mrs. Stevens and myself we thank you for listening to this and we look forward to working with you as you get ready to schedule for your 10th grade year. Thank you.